African-American jockeys were a huge part of the very first Kentucky Derby in 1875. Thirteen of the 15 jockeys were African-American, and of course the race was won by an African-American jockey, Oliver Lewis. Uh, even beyond that, 15 of the first 28 runnings of the Kentucky Derby were won by African-American jockeys. In the 1800s, the institution of slavery created a workforce that helped make Kentucky the center of the horse racing universe. Slaves were taking care of the horses uh, in all facets. That included being jockeys. So the original jockeys were slaves. Uh, you'll hear names like Simon, a very prominent slave jockey who rode a horse named Haney's Maria, who beat General Andrew Jackson's horses on several occasions. And it continued as we get past the Civil War in 1865. Without the black jockeys, there would have been very little racing in Kentucky. And Kentucky became the mecca of uh, African-American jockeys. Willie Sims was from Georgia, Alonzo Clayton was from Kansas, but they all came into Kentucky to gain their reputation. Well, when we look at some of the jockeys that dominated the very earliest Kentucky Derbies, uh, Jimmy Winkfield, who won two Kentucky Derbies, Isaac Murphy is probably the name that you're gonna hear most associated with uh, dominant jockeys in the early Kentucky Derby. Uh, not only was he, he was one of the greatest jockeys really of all time and is still recognized as such. The first jockey to win three Kentucky Derbies and was the very first jockey to be admitted to Racing's Hall of Fame in 1955. Isaac Murphy gained a reputation as a gentleman. He was also known for his great love for his wife, Lucy. A lot of jocks back then, nobody thought anything about throwing a race. He never threw a race. He was known for his uh, his honesty, that if you put him up on a horse, that he would do the best he could to win. While few relics remain from this era of racing in the African-American jockey, the Kentucky Derby Museum in Louisville has one that actually reminds us where the term for the winnings of a horse race originated. Well, the museum is very fortunate to have some artifacts directly related to uh, great jockey Isaac Murphy. One is a silk purse from the 1891 Kentucky Derby. The significance of that purse is that it would have contained the winnings for that race. In the post-Civil War era, the racing industry was a business that crossed racial lines between owners and jockeys. For them, there was only one color. If you get a jock who rides a horse and wins, you tend to want to stay with them. It's like they said on a racetrack, the only color that counts is green. I'm certain race was an issue when people came to betting. I'm not naive about it, but the thing about it is on a racetrack that you got to remember, if the best jock out there is a black jock and you want to bet on a white jock because you don't like black jockeys, you're literally going to be paying for your own prejudice because the black jockeys were enormously talented, just as gifted as their white counterparts. Churchill Downs has the names of the horses who won the Derby. Ridden by African Americans like Alonzo Clayton, Willie Sims, Billy Walker, and Sue Perkins. Everybody talks about his name, Soup. Uh, James Soup Perkins, James Perkins was his real name. Uh, but he was a very young jockey. He entered the racing industry at the age of 11. Started really seriously becoming, making a name for himself at the age of 13. He lived in a house on Thomas Street, which was just behind the Kentucky Association racetrack over in the East End. And he talks about having jumped the fence to go into the uh, racing paddock, into the stables. His brothers, William and Frank, were trainers. And his father, John Jacob Perkins, was also a trainer. Like many African Americans in the area who worked at the racetrack, Sue Perkins is buried in the African Cemetery No. 2 on 7th Street. Tombstones, many weathered by time, tell their stories. Some tell of their occupation, like this bugler. One unidentified soul is marked simply with a horseshoe. It is the home to the first derby winner, Oliver Lewis. Another tombstone shows how young these riders were and one shows how appreciated the jockeys were to the riding stable. But sadly, one tombstone was removed. 
it now stands in the Derby Museum. Isaac Murphy's body was removed from the cemetery, eventually to be buried alone, at the Kentucky Horse Park, next to the statue of Man of War. While considered to be an honor and to share with the world this great name in horse racing, Isaac's beloved wife Lucy was left behind at the African Cemetery No. 2. Her body was left unmarked, forever lost, forever separated from her husband. As America grew into the 20th century, the era of dominance by African-American jockeys finally came to an end. First, as many former slave families migrated to the cities, but also with changes on the racetrack. During the last part of the 1890s, uh, there was uh, much contention between the black and white jockeys, and the racing industry became very dangerous for them. As racing becomes a more lucrative profession, and being a jockey becomes a more lucrative profession, uh, more white athletes are interested in the races and being a jockey. And we have record in the early 20th century of uh, many African-American jockeys, like Jimmy Winkfield, uh, the last Af African-American jockey who won a Kentucky Derby. Uh, he was a victim of rough riding, and there are instances where he was in a race and jockeys were getting close to him, roughing him up, running him up against the rail, uh, trying to intimidate him on the racetrack. Uh, when that starts to happen, trainers are reluctant to use African-American jockeys because they think it's a disadvantage to their horse. So you have just the outright racism of that time period that contributes to it. 